everyone, today I'm making a video to illustrate how the United Nations is doing everything in its power to ensure that we are not accredited for the event, despite the extensive process I went through. The United Nations claim to focus on human rights, humanitarian relief and the environment, or rather the climate scare. The United Nations is not an organization elected by Canadians. Instead, it comprises oligarchs and elites who possess most of the world wealth, delegated to speak on behalf of citizens. They often travel by jet or private plane, and yet they are the one instructing regular citizens to make sacrifices to save the world. Skeptical media outlets like ours that have attempted to expose their hypocrisy are not welcome at their private meetings. They prefer to have complete control over how their events are covered and by whom. They dislike being challenged and exposed and are willing to go to great lengths to deny accreditation. They blocked my colleague Sheila Gunn-Reed for asking tough questions of Canadian delegates at a climate conference after Canadian official whined for her to be banned. We applied for accreditation for the Sustainable Development Goal Summit that took place in New York on September 18 and 19. They mentioned on their platform that nation will discuss how to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goal, including ending world hunger and poverty improving incomes and education worldwide and increasing access to clean water and sanitation. This may seem great at first glance, but how much freedom we would need to sacrifice to achieve it? I initially applied for their accreditation on May 31st. Their website specified that accreditation is typically reviewed within two weeks. After not receiving a response, I called them multiple times to inquire about the wait time. After speaking with several different individuals, someone finally informed me on July 24th that I needed a high visa for foreign journalists working in the United States to receive accreditation from them. Even though I am a Canadian, on the same day, I applied for the U.S. I visa, completed all the necessary steps, and paid the 185 U.S. fee. Subsequently, they requested an appointment at the American Embassy for an interview and fingerprinted. However, no appointments were available before the year 2024. I made numerous calls in an attempt to secure an expedited appointment. Finally, after a lot of effort and persistence, I managed to secure an appointment on August 14 at the embassy in Toronto. I traveled back and forth, completed all the required steps, received a rejection, and the embassy requested more information, which I provide. However, up to this day, I have not received an email from them regarding the status of this I visa. Recently, I received an email from the United Nations stating that my media accreditation has been declined. How can independent media, who are trying to do their job and cover events from a different perspective, navigate such a highly restricted and controlled process that never provide the real reason for refusal? They reject us because we cannot be controlled by the state, given our independence. To them, we pose a threat to their carefully constructed house of card, which they have built over everyone's head and especially their credibility. The UN observed Press Freedom Day, but they are hypocrites on this issue, like they are hypocrites on climate change.
In the United States, the First Amendment support the idea that press should be free to publish information from any sources without censorship, injunction or prior restraint. However, in Canada, under the leadership of Mr. Trudeau, we are currently living under harsh censorship and media restriction. The United Nations hold significant power and influence over many countries. Therefore, if they decide not to deal with skeptical media, these media outlets will encounter various hurdles in the accreditation process. This is the reality of what happened behind the scene in the media acceptance process. It's not the free press that the UN protect. They protect themselves through censorship time and time again. In Canada, you can see it. We are living under a harsh censorship. But go over our website, stopthecensorship.ca, sign our petition, make your voice heard that you will not accept further more censorship because now it's spreading over podcasts and other platforms. So please go over stopthecensorship.ca.